time to actually talk about something you know time to actually in the we were gonna wrap the stream up with an actual message an actual good good message so um I, this video just came up from god damn sp 33k jubilee donated five dollars screw it since everyone asking for reactions can you react to t grizzly's album <laughs> he just threw a hell mail he, he just threw a hell mary out there bro I said fuck it i'm just gonna try speak 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 thanks speak thank you for the five man <laughs> thank you for the five look jubilee just posted a, a video a good video you know middle ground the, their middle ground videos are always good <laughs> charlene said ban no <laughs> they posted a good video it's called mass shooting survivors versus nra members nra is a uh, was it National Rifle Association? Basically, they're like pro gun. They're pro guns. So that is going to be a very interesting topic. Mass shooting survivors versus NRA members. Holy shit. Holy shit. Um, let's see how this goes. And what we can, let, let's see what we can take away from this, digest. Want to let you know this video contains graphic descriptions of violence involving firearms. And also, when we filmed this episode, it was a while back, and we were taking all the necessary safety precautions regarding COVID at that time. This is an important topic, so let us know what you think in the comments below, and thanks for watching. I know for the rest of my life when I have kids, I'm going to be worried that they might experience the same things that I have. Damn. This man, this man has a shirt on that says, did he have a shirt on that says, Black Guns Matter? Oh, shit. It was about 11 o'clock. I was getting ready to leave the bar. Yeah, and just one day I walked in with my friend. Hold on, let me mute. Let me mute. Donated $5. When you gonna react to smoke for oh, brother. Friends, and I was in my first period class. I was on the dance floor. He walked in with a gun in hand and started open fire on the bar. Just kind of happened in the middle of nowhere. Of course, you're just having fun at a concert, and then next thing you know, it's massacre going on all around. Bang, 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 bang. And I just remember like yelling at my teacher, like, we need to lock the doors right now. We're in a school shooting. I end up see this is the thing though. I wonder if they're I don't think they would be against guns. I don't think I don't think they would be against well, I don't know. Maybe they would be against guns after seeing this, but me, I would be like, that would make me want to make sure like people are able to get guns even more. Like Cause bruh, if if the only person that can get the gun is the person that's trying to do fucked up shit and everybody's just out of luck because niggas ban guns, then like everybody's just potentially fucked, bro. Full screen, six. Six. I'm running over to the opposite side of the bar. And I didn't know where any of my friends were. It was chaos somebody has a gun and they have a motive and there's just not a whole lot you can do besides try to you know, get away but i don't really think much about it <laughs> i mean it's just another big corporation doing their thing mm. i believe in the right to protect yourself to pursue life liberty and happiness i believe guns are the great equalizer and unfortunately sometimes they have to be used anytime there is a mass shooting it's always, oh, this is the NRA's fault. In fact, the only time the NRA members have been involved in mass shootings is when we're stopping them. The United States does not have a mass shooting problem. The United States has a mental health, a ignorance around the Second Amendment, and irresponsibility problem. Mm. You can't look at it in a vacuum. You have to look at the entire history. And in this country, every stage where liberty was achieved. This is how I feel, bro. I feel like people bro you don't nobody needs a rifle bro <laughs> i feel like people do not you don't need to walk around with a rifle to protect your home a pistol should be all anybody needs bro a pistol should be all anybody needs but obviously there's going to be arguments about that but or let's group. keep listening typically it was a war that was involved yo earth only thank you for the uh thank you for the uh 15 bro he said, you're the reason I started streaming. Love your content. 
react to Sada Baby more often. Bro, appreciate you, bro. <laughs> Thank you, man. You're awesome. Thank you for the five. Did you watch uh, Attaway General yet? It was getting fire. Six. Yeah, we already watched it. The, the new one, whenever the new one comes out, we'll check it out. I don't personally know anybody who's a member of the NRA. I'm not sure what they have to say. We bought NRA members and mass shooting survivors it's together. Party, together we spark a dialogue about gun violence in America. I'm Antoinette, I'm 39 years old. I'm a mom and I help run my uh, family's small business. Hi, I'm Hayden, I'm 17 and I'm currently Damn. a senior in high school. My name's Heather, I'm a NRA certified handgun instructor and I'm just here to have a civil conversation about guns. My name's John, 17. I work in the software industry and uh, I'm a mass shooting survivor. I'm Dylan, 23 years old, a two-time mass shooting survivor. Damn! I'm 20 years old. I was at the Borderline Bar and Girl shooting and I work with old people. I'm Maj, I'm the founder of Black Guns Matter, reform scumbag, just trying to do the right thing to defend the natural rights to protect life. I'm Jai, I'm 37 years old, I'm an abolitionist, I make my money as a criminal defense attorney. Can I get it? Jesus Christ, imagine if it was just like, I make my money as a criminal, that in period, end of sentence, six, that's it. <laughs> like, holy shit, dude. you guys hear that? Whatever, okay, whatever, let's just keep it going, I guess. My NRA members on the left, or mass shooting survivors on the right. Segregation. NRA members, mass shooting survivors. I lost someone to gun violence. Mm. Uh, yeah, so four months ago was my school shooting, November 14th today. Four months ago? Damn, bro. Shout out to him for coming on here, bro. At 17. And he lost somebody. Is actually the four month anniversary. I didn't know the two people um, who the shooter shot, but I did oh. know the um, shooter. So I did, in a sense, have a connection to someone who died because he did commit suicide after killing two and I believe he's injuring three. So it's just crazy to be, have to go through that. I had a cousin who died ultimately of a, of a shotgun. It was an accident. His girlfriend accidentally shot him in the face with a shotgun. Damn. Yeah, and he lived for three or four months after that in complete agony and pain. I was, yeah, a little kid, so I mean, that was really kind of the first I had heard about something like that, right? See, like, shotguns and rifles, like, why? Well, shit, maybe a shotgun. I kind of want to get a shotgun. No, bro, shotguns are, like, that's just, that's just, just unnecessary, unnecessary, at, like, for real, bro. And then, you know, of course, with the mass shooting, you know, I didn't know the people personally, but I've heard a number of stories. They all sound like great people. My most recent was last week, eighth, a classmate of mine, he got killed by the LA sheriffs. And then at his mm. memorial service, I ran into my other buddy, uh, Martin, who just got killed. He was in the barbershop, somebody ran in, shot him last week. And I've had those experiences just constantly pretty much since the high school age. During the shooting I was at, one of my best friends, he was like my brother, his name was Cody Kaufman. I pulled him out on the dance floor and we were dancing, we were having so much fun because he had just got new jeans that were like two sizes too tight and I had just gotten new boots and next thing you know, you do one more line dance and it's, it's all over. Damn. I was at the Vegas shooting um, at the concert and then borderline as well. I had this man dealt with it twice, bro. Lost one person in Vegas that I had tried to help, and then at borderline I had lost eight people that I knew. Jesus. Oh, sorry, not trying to cry, uh, but yeah. Most of the people, not even just the people here, I think most of the people that's going to be watching, you may know someone that has experienced that. And I think that the key to, to, to solving that is finding out where that comes from. If that person took life and then wound up taking their own life, there's pain there. I think in my neighborhood, we just get so numb to it. Damn. I just want to say I'm so sorry for everyone here. I can't imagine going through it. And um, I have a question for you. So you're in high school. Yeah. Do you feel safer or less safe being that your whole school is a gun-free zone? I guess I feel safer, but I think at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it's a gun or if it's a knife or it's a bomb or if it's a car running into people. I think he was gonna do it no matter what. Do you wish that there, were, there was more that you'd be able to have done? It must feel helpless. 
it was like I went fight or flight, so my thing was like I want to fight. I tried to do everything that I possibly could with the situation that I was in to be able to help. Um, it may not have been the people in the quad, but it was the people in my class. So my first thing was how do I make them feel safe? So it was like unplugging a computer cart, putting it up against the door, stacking desks in front of the door, making sure that people couldn't get in. And I was watching like the news on my phone and you know, I'm not going to tell them that like these people are dead or, um, or these people are injured because that's just going to make it worse. I, I think I'm that flight. mass shootings are a problem, but I think that a lot of the time we're focusing on the wrong thing when it comes to mass shootings. It is a double-edged sword. We should focus on some sort of gun regulation, but at the same time, the other side of the sword is it's a lot of mental health. I think mental health is our problem in the United States because we don't focus on yeah. it enough. It seems like the other side tries to push like as if you don't care. And I think we care very, very much. People think that, you know, people who own guns just want to shoot things. <laughs> I mean, personally, I'd be terrified if I ever had to use it in self-defense. And that's why... Max, I when you get a gun... Bro, nobody gets a gun ever wanting to use it. We get a gun... You get a gun so that, like, if a situation, occur, like, occurs, at least you do have it. Instead of just saying, damn, I, I fucking should have had... If I had a gun, like, I, this, this wouldn't happen, da, da, da. But, um, of course, some people do, you fucking dumbass. But um, I'm talking about obviously normal people. Normal people, when you when you purchase a gun, you don't go into a fucking gun store with the intention like, oh man, I can't wait to fucking get my my first body with that. Like that's what a normal person doing. Of course, if you want to be a fucking dumbass and be like, well, actually, some people do. Cops, they're like, shut the fuck up, damn. It's like you fucking retarded, retard, then go. The responsibility that comes with training is incredibly important. I own. <laughs> Step up. Yeah. <laughs> up, sis. Bro, I'm if you don't have bro, if you do not have a gun, bro, you are like I'm not saying people need to go get a gun and, and, and things like that, but uh bro. He said R word cancelled. Bro, it's a fucking word, man. It is a fucking word. But um if you don't, if you don't have a gun, I've, well, some, a lot of y'all don't need a gun. Y'all are like young as hell, so like whatever, bro. I mean, even still, but like, there's gonna be situations that come up. If we ban guns, people who want to get guns, like, and do illegal shit, are gonna have guns. <laughs> They're gonna get guns, bro. They're gonna get guns, and then the niggas who are getting the guns illegally are gonna just completely fuck the niggas who can't get it legally, like. It's just it's just over for them. So there's nothing there's nothing else you can really do. But I mean, it is what it is. Absolutely, I'm a gun owner. I think one of the proudest. At the end of the day, it's like it's your it's your choice. Like obviously. Things I feel is when I teach, especially women, and they send me a picture and they're like, "Guess what I just bought today," and I just feel like I've helped someone become safer in their life. So. For me, it goes back. Like, you know, in karate class as a kid, they teach you before everything, this is like, this is for defense. I'm not getting this to go out and use it to harm people. I'm, I'm getting it for that safety. And that's what it uh, boils down to for me is knowing that it's gonna be a battle. You may win, but it's at least gonna be a battle. It's not, if you, even if you just take the safety part out, just shooting is fun in general. Like going yeah, to the range is a, is a yeah, fun time. So that they're is used true. for recreation and all like the time. And like also hunting. Yeah. So many people, that's the reason they buy guns is for hunting, to provide food. I, it's almost like my equalizer. What the fuck? Absolutely. So like it, it helps. I don't know about the whole hunting shit, bro. Like, little, uh, you know, I ain't buy a gun to kill an animal, but mm, if that's how you live. <laughs> Notice how nobody really was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she was like, yeah, by hunting, we, we get animals and things like that. Everybody's just like, huh? Uh -huh. I guess, yeah, I guess people do that. I never understood it. Um, I guess it's a sport or, you know, some shit like that, but whatever. It helps you and it gives you more peace of mind. Like. I am not as vulnerable and unsafe as people think. <laughs> people, will, people who don't. know why he doesn't. I've shot plenty um, and I've been trained with, you know, how to use a firearm. Well, the reason I don't have one is simply, I think, because of that accident factor. You know, I'm, is this thing? I would understand, like, I would understand his mindset. I would understand his mindset because 
bro if you like that's like that's from trauma though if you experience something like that where someone accidentally shoots somebody with a shotgun in the face like nobody's gonna like you're gonna be like i never want to see a gun i never want to be around again and i want to keep one in my house but it's like yes experience it's the same thing when people get attacked by dogs when they're younger and then as they get older they just are terrified or absolutely hate dogs thing gonna be locked up and safe at all times you know what i mean like just to avoid some sort of disaster i think all the reasons that you guys are stating that you do have one is completely legitimate and i've certainly considered you know potentially purchasing one and you know doing it the right way obviously it's and crazy all out things. here bro but yeah i think that that's potentially just why i haven't gone there yet I'm not against owning a gun. Eventually, I will. I believe in the Second Amendment. My dad trained me from time to time. He showed, I know where the guns are in the house. I know how to use them. I've gone shooting with my friends a handful of times. Like, I'm around it. I'm a part of it. Like, I mean, for me, it's really no big deal. It's just my own upbringing. Like, I just haven't gotten to that point of taking the action into going to get the gun myself. My dad was um, raised in upstate New York, so he was around guns all the time. And we've talked about it. But it was. So you in UK, they don't have guns at all. Like even the police don't have guns. Hey Dante, I'm 17 and I can get a license to own an assault rifle. Jesus Christ. Only SWAT? So there are guns. We have knives. Jesus Christ. I think I'd rather get shot than be stabbed to death. You know how long that fucking takes, man? I think I said sword. It wasn't for, like, protection more. It was more for, like, that was your lifestyle, yeah. right? It's like you needed to go out and shoot a couple bunnies. You needed to go out and shoot, like, a deer. That was, like, how you fed yourself. That's how you lived. And so I think if I was in that situation, definitely I would own a gun, but in a situation where it's like where I live, I feel safe. Now here's the thing, I can disagree with you, and I do. However, He's young. I am never, and anyone that tries to, tries to make you feel different than that viewpoint, I'm never gonna do that. Yeah. That's your, your right to not have one, I'm like, cool. When I go to my friends' houses that are afraid of guns, that I've known for 15 years, I make a personal choice, I don't take my gun in their house. I make a joke about it, and I'm like, hey man, if somebody kills me in your house, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But just, just commending and making sure that if that's your personal choice, and your personal freedom, and your personal liberty, don't let nobody talk you out of that. I don't think about whether we need more or less guns in this country. I think about freedom. If you my brother and you my, or you my sister and you don't want a gun, I respect your right to not have one. If you my brother or my sister and you want more guns, I respect your right to have one. Where you lose me is if you use any of those firearms negligently or to rob or rape or kill unjustifiably. Like, those, like that dude in the stream. <laughs> like that dude in the stream that cocked his gun back and then shot it on stream. What was he thinking? Then I don't really give a shit what happens to you. America has a mass shooting. Duh. Bro, are you kidding? Hello? These niggas must not live in America. Yeah. A mass shooting is different than- I was about to say, nigga, you just went through two of them. What do you mean? Nobody, it's one thing to hear about these mass shootings going on. And it's one thing to actually be in one. And it's another thing to be in two of them in your lifetime. What? That should not be a regular occurrence. Let's say a murder. When you think about a mass shooting, the perpetrator, they're usually suicidal, right? And they have no agenda other than to take lives. And that's quite different than a typical crime that would involve a firearm. I and just, it's a phenomenon. I and think that's where I'm, I'm somewhat pushing that back. I think in order for us to solve it, we have to start looking at it. This is massive amounts of people that are still shooting humans, yeah. even if it's themselves. Right. If we're talking about stats, mass shootings, they would say, are not a problem based on the data of what that definition of mass shooting is, because that's less than 1% of all death in the country in sure. regards to firearms. So if, if I went just with that, I would not agree that there's a mass shooting problem. But how can I sit next to this young man here who lost eight out of 12 people that he knew in one juncture and say that's not a problem? Mm -hmm. One, we have a mass shooting problem, but we also have a mental health problem. Right. My age range from, I believe it's 
15 to 25, we have the highest depression rate in the entire history of the human race well, that right. data can prove. It was the kid's birthday, the day that he shot up the school. Damn. If one person said happy birthday, got him a card, talked to him and say like, hey, I know it's your birthday next week, want to do something this weekend. It's all about how are we making these authentic human connections with people. If we just talk to people, I think that's where, that's where our problem is. How do you, how do you fucking wake up on your birthday and do that shit, bro? I think you, oh, well, I gotta wait today. <laughs> you do that, period. I believe we have a mental health problem. I believe we have a drug problem. I believe we have a racial problem. And the reason why I don't think mass shooting is a problem is because if we took all the guns, it wouldn't stop the violence. Like you pointed out, they could have used a car, they could have used a knife, they could have used a bomb. That would not absolve these deaths, uh, us from experiencing We have a mass killing problem. They find another way. And by calling it mass shooting and saying we need this gun control now, that's from my perspective, just more of an opportunity to make another law that the police can lock up people in my specific demographic for. I think it's also important to know that I think it's something like 8.9 out of 10 mass shootings happen in gun-free zones. So in my mind, if someone's going mm. to commit mass shootings and there's a sign that says, there's no guns here. It basically invites them in like bet. There will be no bullets flying back at you versus there are trained people ready to do whatever they have to do to protect life here. Which place are they gonna go? Like, I couldn't believe the, um, in Nice, France on Bastille Day, there was like 86 people mowed down by a guy with a truck. Yeah, so but you don't hear anything about, we need truck reform or like truck violence. It's always gun violence. And you don't ever hear that term specifically with other weapons, I guess you could say. I guess one thing that I think viewers should take away from my experience is people go through crisis, but you should never give up on what you believe in, and you should always push through it. Do you think that the United States has a mass shooting problem? Yes. Yes, I do believe that there is definitely an issue that needs to be addressed and resolved. Any mass casualty is terrible. I think if you look in inner cities like Chicago and Baltimore, the media is nowhere around, and there's a mass shooting almost every weekend. So I think it's interesting to look at exactly why they pick the mass shootings that they pick to just delve into in the media. It should be harder to purchase a gun. Uh, so if you agree with like, speak your truth. I don't know about that. There's something called the uh, gun show loophole. Think about it like the black market, right? Unless you have a storefront. It literally. It, I don't know if it should be, um, I don't know if it should be harder to get guns. I literally got my gun in like, the, the second I went in there. I, I, I got a gun the way you get a pair of shoes, bruh. You look, you go in there, walk around, look around, and then you just say you want that one, and then you get it. <laughs> Test people? Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe do some type of, t I mean, they do a test. They have like a form that you fill out. Like you got to fill out some forms and shit like that. And they check your background and shit like that. But um, yeah, I think that's it. He says, you got a gun the fuck? Yeah, and, and what's crazy is a lot of people don't know that. And that's how it should be. People shouldn't, people shouldn't know that you even have a gun. So that if people did try to come up and try you, like they, they going, you know, <laughs> They, they gonna realize how much they truly fucked up. So, um, yeah. And you're telling, you know, the government, hey, I wanna sell guns and make a profit. You need to be certified in that sense if you're gonna be doing that. Otherwise, it's completely legal to, you know, give a gun to a friend or what have you. So I think that it creates an entire underbelly of the market that really shouldn't exist. I mean, you know, if we're not keeping track of who has a gun and where they're buying it, who's selling it, I think guns get in the wrong people's hands. I believe when the reports of the investigation came out of my school shooting, it was a kit gun. So he had actually like put it together himself. He also grew up in a family that, um, that this supported nigga guns. This built dad, I think, a, a gun. Maker. I think people are gonna get guns no matter what. Like True. if they want a gun, they're gonna get a gun. That, that's fact. So it definitely is different from state to state. Sure. In California, it's very difficult. In Illinois, it's difficult. And the crazy thing is you see a lot of 
gun violence in those states, but New Hampshire, it's a constitutional carry state, meaning that you don't even have to have a permit, you can conceal carry, and they have virtually no homicides with guns. So I'm just curious, you what you're asking for basically is like a national registry for firearms, right? Uh, if we could do that, why not? <laughs> okay, so I feel like if you look back in history, it's never worked out for citizens. If you look back at Germany, if you look at Venezuela right now. Fair points, and I read somewhere that- uh, Fair points, I'm know, being bullied, I get it. Okay, I'll, I'll just stop talking. I'll stop giving what I think. If you have a controlled substance possession charge in the last year, you can't get a gun. If you have had a misdemeanor sentenced to over two years in prison, you can't have a gun. And these are, these are- But cops be doing bullshit though. That would be fucked up. Cops literally be pulling people over for like the dumbest shit great safeguards. They need to just be imposed more. I think it should be easier. It's the only constitutional right that you lose with a conviction. Like you come out of prison, you still have freedom of speech, but now you can no longer protect, protect yourself. yourself yeah. Now I, I understand people can do stuff to relieve themselves even of the right to life. I believe that you can give up your right to life based on your actions, but I think we make it too easy to give up those rights. And then when you add in the racial component to these laws, That's what I was just saying. that makes me even more of an advocate against these kind of gun restrictions. Like those certain type of cops who are like, yeah, vote, voting, yeah, voting, yeah, the voting too. Like you can't vote and shit like that. Like there are, there could be some type of cops that want to be assholes and be like, yeah, I'm about to ruin this guy's life, bro. He's never going to be able to vote again, vote again, bro. Or own a gun. Sucker. My opinion of firearm is that's the only thing that really led to abolition was when black people picked up guns. It's really hard to enslave people who have firearms. And so based on the history of this land, uh, my people in this land, I think every one of us should have a firearm, be trained and become proficient and learn how to use it. Teachers should be armed. Okay, who keeps giggling while I'm writing on the board? Come on. Come on. <laughs> I don't know about that, bro. I do not know about that. Some teachers, yo, some teachers is not capable of handling that. They already stressing at home. They stressing with the pay that they're being, you know, that they're being paid. They're, stress they're stressing with badass students. I don't think they need a gun in their hand when a student just keeps talking. I've seen teachers snap and actually like, you know, bang on the table or throw things down or yell and raise their voice and go out of character. They do not need a weapon on them, bro, at all. Yeah, no, you're tripping. You're, I'm good with that. I mean, I believe teachers- That's why you got security there, bro. That's, that, that's why you got security. I'm, I'm fine, you know, we good on that, bro. That want to be armed should be armed. I don't think anybody should have to, you know, worry about the responsibilities that are associated with gun ownership if they don't want to. I don't think it's right for everybody, but obviously the more good people with guns, especially in a school, I think that would be great. Look at what we do protect with firearms. You know, our The bell doesn't dismiss you. Neither do I. The blicky does. <laughs> Nobody move. <laughs> You've been warned. Our politicians, our celebrities, and for our kids, we protect them at, with gun-free zones and they're just left sitting ducks, right? Wait, so I think like, if you have concealed carry permit holders, if you have maybe veterans or ex-law enforcement that are teachers, would you not want them to be able to protect your kid? If yes. Otherwise your option is you're not protected, you have to wait 10, 20 minutes for the police to come with their firearms. To Yo, and a great example of this, a great example for wh like why that makes sense, like just have vet just random veterans around the school with guns and shit. There's there was a dude that was starting a shootout like he got a he bought a shotgun I think it was in a church or something and there was like a security he was just chilling like you know listening and shit and the dude got a shot he got one shot off I think and then the old man but before he could even get the second one put one in his head and took him out man it was like that he did it like that and had he not been there who knows how many people this this dude would have you know took with him before he before he left to come rescue your kids, so. I think that if you want to and you are willing to go through similar training, almost like a concealed carry, so you know what you're doing and it's not just handing a gun to some random teacher saying, here, protect your kids. Yeah. 
it's more of, more of so like you have the training for it, you have the background check, like they said, like you almost are prepared in a way to do what is right. I don't think that a teacher can take, a, take the life of one of their students. Mm, that's a good mm. like, like, if you think, you know, Mrs. Stewart, my 10th grade English teacher, is gonna be able to... Put the gun down, Robbie. Robbie, Robbie, put the gun down. I, that, that's, a, that's a good one, bro. I don't think, I don't, that's a good point. You make, you make a good point. Shoot one of her 16-year-old kids that has a gun. I don't see that. And to that point, Sorry. the inner city and, and urban areas and things like that, the teacher-student relationship is not great. I've seen uh, you know, videos on YouTube, teachers getting beat up and stuff. Yeah. Right, so do we want them to have firearms? We all have jobs, right? And we all have our roles within our jobs that we have to do that we know like this is what we're doing for today, every day. Something may change where we have to adjust to it and all that stuff. The teachers have their job where it's to teach these kids through their process of growing up. But now I have these sixth grade kids where there's 25 of them. Mm. I have to put myself at the point of this moment. If the shooter comes to us, it's between them, me, and the kids. Now if something were to happen to me... You're on your own! Nothing. Ding! Nah, that's fucked up. I think with the precautions that we take already with the schools until... Yo, this is a, this is a question. This is a question for y'all. Uh, if you, if someone was to become a teacher, should they also be required to risk their life to save their students? Should that be required? In, should that be required in the in the job descrip description? So if you want to become a teacher, you have to say you have to say like be, like cops. You you will do, put your life on the line for the students. Yes, but they won't do it. That could be true. I don't know. I don't know if I could, like, I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how many teachers would actually, like, want to even, like, do that. Like, they probably love their students, but to die for them, to die for them. Would you die for me, Miss, <laughs> would you die for me, Miss Karen? Die for you? <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're, like, averaging a C in my class, man. The only thing that... <laughs> I don't know about that, man. The learning how to close your blinds, lock. Now, Betty, see, Betty has an A plus. Now, that's. I'm not saying I'd put my life on the line for her, but I definitely think about it. I mean, an A plus. Come on. But you, see, average. I'd probably, I'd probably give him a firm stop. Okay. <laughs> for you, I would give the, I would give the shooter a firm. Hey, stop it. And after that, if he's like, get the fuck out the way, I'm like, okay, see, average him. <laughs> your doors and all that stuff, get to the back corners, be quiet. That is a good precaution because these kids, when they're going to school, they're going to learn, have fun, be with their friends. That's it, nobody goes to school expecting to fucking have to deal with a dumbass school shooter who got mad because people was bullying him or some shit. This teacher now has a weapon on them. Who's also to say that the teacher can't take action? I know for the rest of my life when I have kids, I'm gonna be worried that they might experience the same things that I have. But I have to accept that if I do, I don't have control of everything. Having a kid is scary, bro. Having a kid is scary. Imagine sending your kid to school and not knowing if they're gonna come back, bro. Myself and the other individual. You're sending them to school, not fucking a uh -oh, fucking war zone, man. Girls that are the survivors of these mass shootings were not the voice for everyone's own beliefs of what they have gone through. Everyone deals with it in their own way. But we are sharing our experiences with you guys and hopefully that brings some light into obviously what goes on with it. You know, I try to not politicize it. If you think about it from a practical level, certain people shouldn't have guns, right? How do we how do we identify those people, and how do we stick to the system, make sure that it's all backed up? He looks and like safe. One of my old you managers, know, I don't think man. That we should do away with the Second Amendment, but do I think that there's a you know a lot of bad people out there? I do, and should they you know have such easy access to a firearm? I think not. I believe there's a way. There's not a way to prevent anything, I don't think, bro. It's just... I think that no mentally or physically sane person would commit a hate crime so big if there wasn't some underlying issue. 
if we find a way to talk about that Deep and therapy. help that, that there's really going to be no problem at all. A lot of the stigma around us surrounding mass shootings is guns, but I, it's, it's really the, the person. And I think if we're all more kind, we just we end up feeling better, right? Well, if we're more loving, we create more understanding around everybody, regardless of race, religion, gender identity, any of that stuff. Um, imagine, how, how is that a fantasy? How do we have to imagine that? How do we have to imagine that? Imagining a world where nobody is fucking like judging anybody from how they look, who they like, and the, the like what they believe in. Imagine we live in a world where none of that fucking matters. Fantasy though. That's fantasy land though. There's always gotta be some anger towards some some group of people. Stuff. Um, if we're more empathetic, we again, we cultivate more understanding around who you are, and then there's less hatred because I understand what you, where you're coming from. And if we're more vulnerable, then we're able to talk about things like mental health. And we're able to talk about like, hey, I feel depressed. Hey, I'm anxious. Hey, you know, I've been thinking about it. I want to shoot up. You gotta, you gotta think about, you, you gotta think about it like this, bro. Like, if it, like, this is me speaking. If I was walking down the street and I got jumped by three random white dudes and they're spitting on me and calling me the N-word and shit like that and they just scatter out. <laughs> I'm going to get up and be like, yo, what the fuck? Those guys are assholes. <laughs> Those guys are fucking assholes. I'm not going to think, yo, white people fucking suck, bro. I fucking hate all white. Like, I'm not going to think like that. But other, But people don't be thinking like that. They will have experiences where a black person has done something to them or a white person or a Mexican or whatever has done something to them. They're like, yo, because of this person, all these people are bad and they are disgusting and they need to do this, that and the third. But people don't think like that, bro. It's just those three people that spit on me and call me the N word. Ain't even take nothing. They just kicked me, bro. Like, yo, fuck you, bro. Damn. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Fucking dumbass, man. Fuck you up a school I like and you're the only person I feel safe talking to you know if we prioritize those we as humans become better and then we can contribute to our global community that's uh, that, I mean I love all that I and mean, being a mom especially I want my daughter to grow up in that kind of world you know and I think that those things are totally possible I just think that also in the meantime we have to address the issue that there is evil in this world like I we don't want it to exist. I don't think you can legislate it out. A good that guy with a gun true. is going to stop a bad guy, hopefully, with a gun. That's like, I mean, the best chance, you know? That is true. Trust me, I really want to believe that, and I do, that there is greatness in this world, there's kind people. That... Oh, he's experienced two of them. He don't, he don't believe that shit, anything, and I don't blame him. But we can do a lot of great things. I've just seen too much now. Too fucking where... much it only really comes down to one individual has the mindset that this is what I choose to do today. And it's sporadic, it's random, bro. I don't blame him at all, man. And they take those actions, that's how the cards are played. I want there to be something that can be done to stop and prevent we all these things do. to happen so that these three and you guys don't have to experience it one more time or you guys ever in your life to understand the shoes that we're in. You know, there's almost no rhyme or reason sometimes why these things happen. And I think that's why it's a problem. I'd love to wave a magic wand and make, make it so that it never happens again. It's not possible. There's no motive that makes sense to go to a bar and, and do what the guy did that night, right? America has a sickness. America's main sickness is white supremacy. It's an issue that we have not addressed. It's an issue that's written into the foundation of this nation when the Founding Fathers wrote, all men are created equal while holding slaves. And I think most <laughs> of these issues- All men are created equal. Well, this is not a man. This is a, this is a Negro. Okay, come on guys. Come on guys, keep up, keep up, keep up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, well, well, that makes sense. I'll stop, 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 that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> all men are not created equal, except the Negroes. Of course, of course, of course. It's, 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 all right. Shoes are rooted in it's that. It's chemistry, my dad. And if we just keep you know, putting a Band-Aid on it and don't get out and get that cancer, we can't reach those levels. But I think that's what it would take because that's what can start the healing process. In light of the coronavirus, we're just being courteous and not like hugging or shaking hands. Back when it wasn't <laughs> that bad. <laughs> Namaste. That's right. Why is he bringing up race? 
Okay. I mean, what? You, you can't like ignore it. You can't ignore it. You can't ignore it, bro. I mean, as much as pe as much as people try to be like, oh my god, why are you gonna bring race into it? Why are you gonna talk about race? <gasps> of course, we're gonna talk about race. I mean, was what he's saying not facts though, or is it just because you didn't want to hear it? It's okay. It doesn't.